Uh, Six Trends charity of choice that we're supporting is the Guilds Club of Greater Toronto. We're going to give you a surprise bit of fun, a little app that we've written. Every time we do one of these, we write a little app quickly. And if you want to, there's an obligation you can you can make a donation through the app, but you can use the app anyhow. Okay, press the button when it comes up. You tap, there's a big button in the middle. We have a wheel that spins around. So you push the button in the middle, the wheel spins around and it chooses the, the dream puppy for you. We're using the latest age of artificial intelligence techniques. We analyzed you all before you arrived. Picking over the data in your digital footprint. So, you got one? What'd you get? Oh, pugs are winning. Anybody else? A chihuahua, okay. So, uh, again, no, no obligation, but there's a big red button on that. If you ever want to make a donation to Gildes, you can just press that button, and it will find a way of uh, working with you to get some money off you. Donation could be anything from a dollar to as, as much as you like. Okay, so we'll start taking questions from the audience. I've worked with the dating service before. Okay, so you worked with a matchmaking service? Yeah, okay. and there are some people that are really in their head, and it's really hard to tell them that they're, they're that something they, they should they change. They need to improve. Yeah, so how do you deal with people like that? Because yes. they think they're the They're ready and there. ready yeah, to, and yeah. So what, what I do is, if someone comes to me for matchmaking and I don't feel they're 100% date ready, that's kind of how I term it. Then I say, hey, let's let's start with some coaching. Right now you're here and I want to bring you up to here. Okay. So it's nothing bad, but if I throw you out on a date, you're going to self-sabotage. If you haven't been on a date in three years, I'm not going to throw you to the wolves because you're going to fail, right? So let me coach you throughout this process. Once you're feeling confident and ready, then we can move forward with matchmaking. But until then, I'm not just going to take yeah. singles that just... But you know, what about those ready. people who are not really receptive of your coaching? Do you just well, most people most people that come to me are receptive. If they're not, then they're not. There's nothing yeah. I can do. But a lot of people that have come my way mm -hmm. are looking for help other than asking their friends or family. And because I'm an outside source, I'm not your best friend. I'm gonna be very honest yeah. with you. I'm not gonna hurt your feelings, but I'm gonna be constructive. And there's a difference being mean like millionaire matchmaker and being yeah. nice like Shani. <laughs> so there, there is a firm line, right? You have to be careful. You know, I've I've taken men to Botox clinics to get their eyes done, and it's it's taken years off of his his looks, and he has a girlfriend now. And I'm not saying that that one little thing changed, but it helped enhance his beauty. And if I can give you that one tip that maybe you didn't think of, I'm gonna do that for you. So how did you bring that up? Because Stuff like that, I feel like it can... <laughs> well, you have to build a relationship. Like, yeah. You have trust, you build that client mm -hmm. relationship. It's not like I just go up to people and say, fix this, you know, it, it comes throughout time. So if you hire me as your matchmaker, that, you know, we facilitate. I'm kind of like your coach throughout the whole process. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so it seems like today there's a lot more people that blame technology, right? Like we, we hear it more and more that when people are having trouble finding a significant other or finding a long-term relationship, they blame technology over themselves, right? It's, you know, tech has changed the way the world operates. So or AI or bots or Tinder being whatever, you know, instant gratification of images. So whatever they choose to blame. So when you hear that technology is being more and more blamed, what advice would you give people in the room or is technology to blame? Next question. So this is a great question, and thank you, Eric. Eric, interestingly, I would I would say he's he's a senior manager at one of the world's most successful dating companies that doesn't know it. He's at LinkedIn. Oh um, wow, that's where I get my clients. It's, like, <laughs> it's successful because it precisely isn't a dating site. I think that's one of the things. It's professionals meeting each other and and, and having you know useful conversations that turn into friendships. Um, so. Okay, the blame game. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, um, Shannon, you might actually be a better place to answer this, but one of the things I would say is, it, a lot of it, to me, comes back to the time, the time slicing, the allocation of time. The, it's interesting that Google bought a company that was specializing in tasks with conclusions, or 
goals as opposed to to-do lists. They've been integrating that into their calendar system. Because as humans, we're much better at being goal-driven to deadlines. Now, that as a technology we all accept in the workplace. It's, it's contemporary practice. When we think about it as, as individuals outside the workplace, that we don't tend to do quite as well. It's like the New Year's resolution, and you write down 10 things that mm -hmm. you're going, going to do that year. It's like, yep. most of them are impossible, or you know, like renew the membership of the gym, lasts about three weeks, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, yeah, we have a tendency as humans to blame everybody and uh, everything that we can. So I would say, OK, two techniques that work quite well. One is self-awareness. Like, instead of just saying that individual was useless, they weren't available that one time slot over the two-week period I wanted to meet them, it's like, well, maybe you're doing something wrong, but you've created that like, tiny, tiny opportunity for somebody. Um, so the self-awareness, self-reflection as well, mm -hmm. is um, what are you actually terrible at? Yeah, we all suffer, the Americans have a term for it now, pro -noia. Uh, we all suffer a little bit from pronoia, which is the opposite of paranoia. You think that you're doing, you're doing amazingly well compared with how you are doing. And yet, all, all humans are fallible, and we do lots of terrible things every day, which we just kind of, we interpret our own narrative. And that's kind of good as well, because it gives us strength to keep going through bad stuff. But it's also a weakness, because that self-awareness doesn't necessarily come from meeting up with your friend, having a drink on a Friday night and saying, oh, you know, it's another terrible week with that terrible individual that messed it all up, was no use, I don't want to meet them again. But actually thinking, well, maybe some of it was down to you. Um, so I, I think it's interesting to me that some of the tools and technology has evolved in the workplace, but it hasn't evolved in personally. how we behave personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Yes, um, yes. I've been, well, I've coached a lot of individuals that don't, aren't really making time for themselves. And, uh, you know, they're just so focused on their career and building that up and, you know, working out and doing things, but not really looking at their own life and their own goals and their own, you know, making time to go on dates, making time to, like, go to the spa or whatever they want to do to get them relaxed and rejuvenated. A lot of people are, are blaming technology because this is the only thing they're doing. So if it's not working, well, it's shit. It's that, that guy's a jerk. I'm done with online dating. It's crap. Everybody's losers. So this is what's happening because they're relying on this one, one dating app instead of going out and doing the work for themselves. And that's why I push singles to go out and do the work. It's the same as you go to work, you put in an effort, you schedule meetings. Why not schedule time for dates? Why not, um, you know, why not make time to socialize or go to a concert with a friend? Don't just wait for stuff to happen. You really have to like get involved. And you know, volunteering is great. Uh, wine tastings, whatever you're interested in, you're going to kind of meet like-minded people there. So don't be afraid to venture out of your comfort zone. And if you are single who may not have a singles network of friends to go out with, then I'm a personal wing woman as well. So I can take you out and help you meet people that way. I do little introductions. I, I go to the bathroom. You work your magic. And now you have a date. You don't steal all the best dates, though, do you? Are you a wingman? Pardon? You don't steal all the best dates. No, no. I wear a ring, so people think I'm engaged. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, are you guys a couple? No, we're friends. Yeah. But that, that, just know that there's resources out there for you. There was an article in the Globe and Mail about it, about hiring a wing woman. You can Google it. It's great. You know, people hire this service all the time. So don't be afraid to utilize it. But I actually have a question. Sorry, now. <laughs> Because you're talking about putting effort in, and at the last speaker series, Tom, you did a presentation where you had taken a walk in the park with our granddaughter, and the Google could map, based on Google Maps, you could map out where you had been and where you were coming back to. So could technology help us a little bit more? It seems that it's sort of at this, a bit of an esoteric level. You swipe left, you swipe right, whatever. What if you were able to swipe left or right, and you would know if that person had been at the park nearby well, there's, you there earlier is in the, the day. Well, there is the dating app happen where right. you see who you've crossed paths what with. What if you knew about what their likes and dislikes were? So could technology help us in that way, not just with perhaps dating relationships, but social, being able to put in that effort to be social? So, so I think, I mean, I'll jump in here with one yeah, comment. Yeah. 
I think that uh, a lot of these techniques, they're quite interesting. Like you're in the location, there's someone nearby who would like to have a coffee with you or, or whatever, coffee and a donut. Um, but <laughs> is that what they call it outside? Yeah. Uh, the, I think the <laughs> bagel, that's it, thank you. Oh, co coffee meets bagel. Coffee meets bagel. <laughs> I am a little bit rusty as a user. I'm more uh, behind the scenes. He's engaged. I have to say, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. So um, if you're looking at what this stuff do is doing, it's very functional. It's like someone's there. Somebody matches this, that, and the other. What um, it's not doing is any of the emotional stuff. Like, yeah. is that person in the mood to me? Well, they might say, yeah, but what about the majority of people who are not in the mood to meet because they're having a tough day and it's like the weather's not great outside, et cetera, et cetera. They, how, how do you get an app like that to put two people in the mood to meet? You, right now, you don't. Yep. Whereas, as Shannon was saying, you bump into someone in a coffee store and you start a pointless conversation about something and it, it becomes uh, a more interesting dialogue, you're kind of getting drawn out of yourself and into the social environment. And I'm not really seeing that with the apps yet. And I, I don't know if it's because what we really need to see is stuff in a physical, spatial environment. I mean, imagine if there was a little, I've got my augmented reality glasses on, there's a little pink glow above those of you who are starting to feel a little bit amorous from this evening, from the evening's conversation, then, you know, that might make it a little bit more approachable to start a conversation. And if if I start chatting to somebody who's got a pink glow and it, and it starts going pinker, then that's good. And maybe it goes, maybe a big cross appears and I've, I've messed up. Yeah, it's like playing The Sims. Um, these, these things are coming. You better believe it. Yeah. And when your phone is starting to do filtering for you and giving you this information, then it's going to be, I think it's going to be game changing if it can happen in a physical space as opposed to just swipe left, swipe right, which, which, to me, it's kind of ludicrous. I think Tinder has recognized that. They're starting to try and build more profiling and more data about people. And also video video profiles are going to become really popular, I think, in the future. Instead of written bios, it's going to be like, hi, I'm Shani, and I'm 39, and I'm single, and I like this, and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I think that's going to be really cool. Because then you're going to really showcase your personality. It's not just a photo. You can be funny. You can just be who you are. I'm surprised that hasn't come on the market. I think so I think it, it someone I think someone somewhere it is happening now. I just forget exactly where. And, yeah. But I was approached as a matchmaker to do videos for um, client, like to partner up with someone and do like a video as a profile instead of just a written one. So, so I do like the concept. I just want to ask Eric a question. That seems to be how LinkedIn is evolving, right? With the with the uh, video uploads and, and things like that. And I'm seeing that even in employment recruitment, that they're asking for more videos and things like that. Do you think that that's impacting right across the board from the standpoint of what you do, the work you do? So oh, no, I just thought it was funny because the video for dating, I was making a comment to Sash here that, I don't know if you remember, it's like old school VHS tapes where you'd record live your video dates and then it would be delivered to people's homes. It's like, you know, the 80s are coming back now just in a form of online technology. So 87% so of the online population in Canada will watch a video that's longer than 60 seconds in the next 30 days. So that's the highest percentage of online population in the world for a country. So we are more likely as Canadians to watch videos than anybody else. I watch them before bed all the time. I get like hooked. Yeah. Any other questions, sir? <laughs> I actually agree the utility of video is that, well, it's just been super useful. I use Bumble to match with someone and I have my radius, I had my radius set to two kilometers only, and I was previously successful with that um, in my dating, and then I was outside of my area at work and I swiped, and uh, I happened to match with somebody who lives abroad in Europe, and then he was just leaving, and so and so forth, but we switched to like FaceTime video, and then through that we've been able to like really get to know each other in different, Circumstance, like you know, if I'm hosting, getting ready to host a dinner for friends, and you know, whatever, like you see each other in your day to day. So I think video dating would be fantastic. Yeah, there's Zoom, Skype, everything you can utilize nowadays. 
Okay, well, I'd like to thank everyone attending on behalf of Six Trends at the Gilders Club and the Spoke Club. Uh, you can follow president of Six Trends, Mr. Tom Barker, at, at, on Twitter, at Six Trends. And if for any of you who would like dating advice and a personal life coach for dating, you can follow at Shanny in the city, S-H-A-N-N-Y in the city. So we would like to thank Mr. Demetrius and thank you very much to Peter for getting everything set up and all the hard work you've done to get this production happening. Um, thank you very much everyone for attending. Thank you. Uh, uh, big thanks as well for Ryan for hosting this and for Shannon who's given us some fantastic insights. I'm sure you'll all be able to pick up her cards at the back of the room. Um, and also for Pat and Lee coming on behalf of Gilded. Thank you very much.